here we are. Can you tell people what learned helplessness is and and explain um, some of the, is I, I'm sure anyone that's listened to me on other podcasts and things like that has heard me um, butcher some of your work. So uh, I, would, I would love to have your take on it. Well, learned helplessness is this concept that goes back decades. A guy named Martin Seligman, University of Pennsylvania, sort of pioneered this. So depression, you look at depression, how does one think about depression? You could think of it as a genetic disorder. There's genes that predispose you to it. It could be viewed as a neurochemical disorder. It could be viewed much more intuitively for most of us. It's a disease of screwy emotions. You don't feel pleasure. You don't feel anticipation. You perseverate on negative affect. That's the jargon of the field. And all along, there's been another angle, which is to think of depression as a disorder of abnormal thought. And this took everyone by surprise. Um, This was a view that sort of snuck in through the back door in the realm of sort of cognitive behavioral therapy. And it's this whole notion that in addition to weird emotions, all of that, you think about the world differently. You see glasses that are half full as being entirely empty. You see lack of efficacy where there actually is efficacy, you see interpretations at every possible turn that you have no control, you know, predictability, no outlets, you're hopeless, you're helpless. And this is what depression is about cognitively. And when you look at it, like some of the nuts and bolts stuff that goes wrong in the brain and depression has to do with more brainy cerebral regions. And you give people like tests, you flash up a positive word, party, funeral, party, back and forth. Which one do you remember more? And if you're depressed, depressive history, you remember the funeral word. You're all sorts of ways in which your brain is tilted to decide that you have much less control over what's going on than you actually do. So a great way of framing that and what this whole concept is, is you have in effect learned that you are helpless. And Mm -hmm. this was originally shown with lab animals and, you know, the nuts and bolts work the exact same way on us. What is learned helplessness about? You get some situation where something's awful happening, something stressful, something traumatic. There's not a damn thing you can do about it. This is reality, all of that. And it ends. And with any luck, what you conclude afterward is, well, that was awful, but it's over with. That was that. That's not the entire universe. And what happens with learned helplessness is you just overgeneralize that one event, that one trauma, that one failure, or that childhood filled with trauma and failure, whatever. Those experiences were not just then. That's what it's always is. Wherever I look, wherever I go, I'm going to have no control, no predictability. I am hopeless and I am hopeless in regard to that. So in that realm, that's just a weird way of thinking. Um, it's a cognitive distortion. What happened when happened when. But the distortion is deciding that thus inevitably it's going to be forever everywhere you look. So that is sort of where learned helplessness fits into a picture of depression. 